Okay, so I've seen other people do this and I had to try it myself and this is absolutely genius. So I haven't made any decisions yet, but I've been thinking of transforming the, the shallow into a... Welcome to a new video everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're taking a look at the 70 liter classic nature style aquascape. I'm going to give you guys a bit of an update. Uh, we're going to do some maintenance and after we're done with that we're going to buy the new fish because the tank is now one month old it's it's quite stable and it's definitely ready for some for some cool fish i already have a plan in mind what kind of fish i want but i always find that those trips to a fish shop yeah they, they never really go as planned so we'll go to the shop later and then we'll see what we come home with okay so let's take a closer look at the tank i think honestly i think we can all agree that the plant growth in the past one month has been quite insane um, we already have a full carpet of the glossostigma. Uh, there is one small issue with the tank. I'm still struggling a little bit with uh, blue-green algae, cyanobacteria. So I'll show you. Mm -hmm. So there in front, you see in the hair grass, there's a little bit. There's a few spots here in the carpet as well. On the on that small piece of java fern, there's some blue-green algae. So let me first explain to you why I think the blue-green algae happened and how I'm going to get rid of it. So I think why it happened is during the first two weeks, the spiderwood had a lot of fungus, a lot of this white slime on the wood. And because of that, some plants came in contact with that white fungus and they started to melt. So I had a lot of melt with my Ludwigia arquata and I had a lot of melt with the uh, Merifilum guiana. There's a green plant in the back there. So because those two plants were melting quite a bit, we had a lot of uh, dead plant matter in the tank, so a lot of waste, a lot of rotting plant ma material basically. And I think because of that the, the phosphates in the tank were rising and because of the high phosphates we got a little bit of blue-green algae. That's my theory. And now how I'm going to get rid of it is basically by keeping a very high nitrogen level in the tank. So let me show you here in the cabinet. I have my fertilizers and over here I have a bottle of pure nitrogen, NO3. So now daily, I'm just dosing a lot of this stuff. So I'm literally, I'm just opening the bottle and I'm just pure nitrogen in there. So I'm keeping the nitrate levels very, very high and blue green algae doesn't really like that. So hopefully by doing this for the next two, three weeks or so, the, the blue green algae should disappear by itself. If that doesn't work, we can always do a, a blackout, just a three, four day blackout, and then the blue-green algae will definitely be, be gone. But the blackout is not my first, my, not my preferred method of action. So let's start with the high nitrate levels and then hopefully it should, it should go away by itself. Now, because of that high nitrate level, the plants are growing quite fast as well, but I'm loving it. So the, the carpet, I've already turned it once, like, uh, like oh, I think it was a week ago even less than a week ago and it's already time for the second trimming session. So that's pretty cool. Also the stems in the background, the Rotala orange juice, I've already trimmed that once. It's already starting to grow back pretty fast. In the foreground, the carpet is starting to mix all together. We have the Glossostigma, then we have the red grass, that's the Halantim Telenum red. And then we have the normal uh, dwarf hair grass, the Eleocharis acicularis. And everything is just starting to, to blend together now, which I really like. So it's starting to look very natural. And the one thing that's not really growing very fast is the crypts. So if you've seen the setup video of this tank, you will remember that I trimmed off all the, uh, the leaves from the crypts and basically just planted the root system. And right now they're, they're starting to grow back just very, very slowly. So you can see some small leaves over there and in the back as well, mostly over here. See, so the leaves are very, very small. They should definitely get a lot bigger, but um, yeah, there's no rush there. And one thing that I didn't show on the setup video is um, the Anubias. So I got some really nice pots of Anubias Nana Petite, but they were actually quite big. So the Anubias is, is grown immersed in the greenhouse and immersed, they just grow a little bit bigger. Um, in the aquarium, I want them to be really small and compact. So what I did was a little bit of an experiment, but I literally removed almost all of the leaves. I just packed them all off and I just planted the, the rhizomes. This was a bit of an experiment just to see if we could get more compact growth this way. So I just planted the rhizomes and you can see on this Nubius right here, uh, new leaves are starting to grow back from the rhizome. 
and hopefully this way we'll have very small Anubis. I'll show you kind of what I mean in my other tank. So here we have my newly set up no filter aquascape for my guppy babies. So we have a small group of guppy fry in here. And this is what I mean. So here we have a beautiful clump of Anubias, but the leaves are very, very small. So this is kind of what I you know, what I want to happen in the 7 liters capers tank as well. So hopefully this will uh, this will work. So yeah, I'm really happy with the progress after one month. Um, I mean, of course, we still have to deal with the blue-green algae issues. But besides that, we don't really have any issues. I mean, there's a little bit of algae on the on the rocks here. But I'm not going to touch that. I mean, that's just food for the uh, for the other sinkless. They need to have something to eat as well. So I'll just leave that. Um, we have a little bit of green spot algae on the glass here. You just might be able to see that. But yeah, that's that's completely normal in the new setup. And then we'll, we will scrape it off and it will stop coming back eventually. So yeah, I think it's time for the maintenance session. Uh, there's a few things I want to do. Mainly we have to take care of the moss. So if you've seen the setup video, you'll know that I tied a lot of moss to the branches with cotton thread. Uh, this was the first time for me. Normally I just glued moss to the hardscape with some super glue. But I wanted to try something else this time. Um, the moss is starting to grow really well now. So it's time for the first trimming session. Uh, this is going to be a bit tricky because moss doesn't float up to the surface. It actually sinks. So we need to uh, see if we can catch that properly. And the other thing I want to do is I want to trim the Myriophyllum Guiana. So that's the green stem plant in the background there. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of melt with this plant. So basically the bottom part of the stem, you might be able to see it through the wood, is, is just completely bare. There's just some stems with no leaves. So I want to trim them, remove the bottom part, and then replant the, the healthy stems, basically. Yeah, I think that's it. We'll just do a little uh, cleaning of the glass, do a small water change. And I think then we're good to go. We can start making our way to the fish shop and buy some new fish. Okay, so I've seen other people do this and I had to try it myself and this is absolutely genius. You know how when you're, tr when you're trimming moss, like moss always flows to the bottom. So it's super annoying to trim. And if you don't, if you don't siphon out all of those pieces of moss, like it's going to get stuck everywhere. And before you know it, you'll have moss in your entire aquarium. That's something I really wanted to avoid with this aquascape. So <laughs> I found this little hack from other people. So I have a small external filter. This is an Eden 501. I'll put a link in the description. And this is basically like a vacuum cleaner. So I've, so the fresh water is coming out here and with the inflow, I'm basically siphoning piece of moss so let me show you right so over here on this piece of driftwood you know we have a lot of moss so let me just start trimming it I'm taking my vacuum cleaner and just sucking up all these small pieces of moss it's not going anywhere besides this small little filter how good is that Right, that was my first experience with the moss vacuum cleaner it's something i would use in the future but i need a stronger filter this one was not strong enough like the suction is not very strong so you really need to be above the moss before it will then enter the pipe so it's yeah it's not really working very well right now but i think i got all the moss out so i'm very happy with that so if you want to use this make sure you use a bit stronger filter this one was 300 liters per hour i would use maybe something like four or five hundred liters per hour okay so next up is the mirror film I'm gonna cut it right at the very substrate, cut it all the way at the bottom, take everything out, and then replant all the nice looking stems. All right, so the moss is trimmed. I've replanted the mirror film. Now we just need to do big water chains and then the maintenance session is done for today. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that I've upgraded this tank with a new light. So before this I had the WRGB2 from Chihiros and right now I have the WRGB2 Pro. So this is a completely new light. I made a quick unboxing video about this. If you want to see it, I'll leave a link on top of the screen. But this is a very, very powerful light. I think I'm only running it on 75%, which is already a lot. 
I'll leave the settings, I'll link the settings on the screen right now so you can see it. We are very, very powerful, but very good light. All right, so that's the water change done. I'm sure some of you are thinking like, why is he doing water changes with buckets? What, what an amateur. So I have a system, I have a long garden hose and a return pump to easily drain and fill these tanks. But if I'm just doing one tank, it's, it's too much hassle to get all that set up. It's just easier to just do a few buckets and be done with it. If I'm doing all my tanks in one day, of course I will take the hose and drain them all and fill them all with the hose. But sometimes bucket is just easier if you're doing one tank. Okay, so I'm on my way to Maui's Fish Kwekerei. I've been there before a couple of times already on the channel. It's a bit further away from my home, but they really have a nice selection of fish, usually. So I'm hoping that they will have some nice dwarf cichlids, maybe some apistogramma, that would be nice. Maybe some green neon tetras, if they have that, then, then I'm very happy. So I'll, uh, I'll take you guys inside. I'll probably not be talking there because it's very noisy, but uh, I'll, I'll film some clips. All right, we're back home again. Fish have been acclimating for a little while already. I just had some lovely dinner. Um, it was a very successful trip to the, to the fish shop. I got exactly what I wanted. So let's release these guys and then I can show you what I got. All right, first up, we got a small group of green neon tetras. These guys are completely stressed out right now and have zero color apart from the fluorescent stripe on their bodies but these guys are going to color up absolutely beautiful um, i've been wanting to have these guys for a long time already but um yeah just didn't have the right tank for it and i think this is a perfect tank for these guys we only have 12 right now i think they were yeah this, this was all that were available at the shop they didn't have any more so we got 12 right now and maybe soon i'll uh, i'll go and buy some more if i find them again And now for the main event, I got myself a pair of, well, at least I hope it's a pair, a male and a female apistogramma. Super excited about this. Probably you guys don't know this about me, but I, before I was into aquascaping, I was actually busy with uh, dwarf cichlids. So apistogramma, I used to keep them a lot in the past. So I'm very, very excited about this. This is a apistogramma trifasciata. I think the common name is a piece of the three striped pisogramma, something like that. Very beautiful. It's gonna get a very big blue mohawk. Mohawk. Yeah, that was uh, that was all. Thanks for watching. <laughs> of course, these guys are instantly hiding. So let's just give them some time to uh, to adjust it to this new tank, and then I'll take some beautiful shots later. There he is, Mr. Big Guy. So you can already see a little bit of that blue color, but once the uh, once this guy will get adjusted to this new tank, he's gonna get a lot more blue than this. And he's keeping it down right now, but he has this huge mohawk. Mohawk, so his uh, his back fin is like huge. At least the green neons have already colored up really nicely after only five minutes, so that's good. I personally actually like these a lot more than than regular neon tetras or cardinal tetras. 
because they stay a lot smaller. So especially for this tank, you know, this size aquarium, uh, the green neon tetra is, is a perfect choice in my opinion. So yeah, I'm really happy with these guys. Definitely need uh, some more of them, but I mean, I'm not sure actually. I mean, uh, we could of course buy more of the green neon tetras and make the group larger, or I could get a, a different type of tetra and maybe we can have like a mixed, a mixed group of, of tetras. But I think uh, I would like to keep this sort of like South American style fish only. I mean, the, the plants are not South American, that's for sure, but yeah, maybe we can keep the fish uh, only from South America. That would be cool. Like I said earlier, I, before I was into aquascaping, I used to keep a lot of dwarf cichlids, so I was very into like the South American style biotopes with a lot of botanicals, a lot of leaf litter, very dim lighting. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to dig into the archives and maybe I can find some old old footage from my old tanks. That'll be, uh, that'll be cool to see again. But yeah, I'm thinking of maybe going back to that a little bit, like combine aquascaping with biotopescaping. I think that'll be cool. So I haven't made any decisions yet, but I've been thinking of transforming the, the shallow into a yeah, like a South American planted aquascape slash biotope. So like lots of wood, um, lots of botanicals, but also lots of plants. And then different different types of apisograma, different types of dwarf cichlids and some a mix of tetras. I think that will be pretty cool, but that's just something I've been thinking about. Nothing, nothing set in stone yet. Mm -hmm.